God's word, what he's put on my heart that he wants me to do. I truly believe it's what he wants me to do. Um, I just don't know how I'm going to do it. Uh, God says he's going to take care of everything. He says he's going to act in a supernatural way to make this happen. I'm personally here. Let me take off my glasses. You see who I am. Um, I've got on this GoFundMe website, which is where I'm at now, where I'm going to post this at. I'm just going to kind of follow their thing here, their suggested formatting. So let's go with it. So it says, uh, describe who will benefit. I believe that God, all God's children are going to benefit. You know, we don't know how God works or, or or what his reason for this cross is, but I'm going to explain to you how I got to where I am with this cross. And I believe that people's going to get saved just by the mere sight of this, this cross. God is going to work in a supernatural way that only God can work in. He says, what will the funds be used for? It's the next thing it says to answer. I'm going to tell you, we're going to need gas. We're going to need food. At some point, we're going to need lodging. I have a couple ideas. Uh, like get one of these wraps along the back of the truck. Um, well, what I got going on here, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. But it's just one idea. I'm going to focus on it. There we go. Okay. So standing on the word ministries presents, you know, maybe um, a cross country mission. Uh, here's me carrying a cross and a Bible, stepping on a couple demons, and this is all going to be like an, an animation, you know, not like a, not like actually me, but an animation. And then my daughter up in front saying, uh, you know, get behind us, Satan, and she's carrying the the word of God, a sharp double edged sword, and she's slaying a demon as it comes out or at, at her, you know. That's one idea. Um, and I got another one saying, you know, give your heart to Jesus. Um, my daughter's still out front with the, carrying the, the, the word of God, which is the sword that's mentioned in Ephesians, you know, full armor of God. It's our spiritual uh, weaponry. You know, I was like, well, it's getting scary out here, you know, and then my wife back behind us, you know, in the truck saying, yeah, get behind us. Saying, I mean, I, I don't know. It's just ideas. But... funds are essential and important I believe God's really got his hand in all of this if, if he didn't I wouldn't be here asking you to help um, what the, the mission will mean to me is that for some reason I have this deep deep inside my gut desire to take off carrying this cross but <laughs> like my wife says the first time I got this, this thought in my head it was cross country we didn't even know what it was all my wife says is, George, we got bills. You need to go to work, pay these bills. We got time to go across country. I'm telling you, children of God, God's got his hand in this. So, let me just, uh, let me give a short testimony on, on how I ended up here. Um, the first time I met God was in uh, 2004, the first time I met Jesus. I was up on a mountaintop over South Korea. This is the first time he'd ever showed up in my life. Now, if Jesus has ever showed up in your life, if he has, all glory be to God. If he hasn't, give your life to Jesus. Give your heart to Jesus because he's real. But the first time he showed up in my life was in 2004 over in South Korea up on a mountain. I was going through a divorce. I divorced my first uh, wife for money. I mean, and this is just a, it just shows how, how Satan works in our lives, you know. That dollar rules everything. But, you know, because of the way that I left my wife, and I got with my second ex-wife for money. Money don't sustain a marriage. Money don't sustain happiness. Money don't sustain love. Money's just money. It's Satan's tool. Um, so that didn't last either. Anyways, I ended up with my, my wife that I'm with now, and it wasn't until then that uh, Jesus gave me a daughter, you know, where I, I really believe this is where I'm supposed to be. Uh, but anyways, on the... January of last year, I kind of started what I like to call chasing Jesus. You know, he hadn't showed up since 04. I was going through some problems with bad alcoholism. You know, I smoked three packs a day every day, or two and a half packs, give or take. Um, so I started chasing Jesus. And the first thing I noticed when I started chasing Jesus was that Jesus had been chasing me my whole life. And I could, you know, turn to the right and turn to the left, and I could see Jesus' footprints all throughout my life where he had helped me and, uh, and sustained me throughout my life. 
By the time January 18th of this year rolled around, this was the second time Jesus has showed up large and in charge in my life. My wife had called me. I was in Oklahoma. I'm driving down the road. True story. I'm driving down the road. Jesus delivered me right there on the side. I was driving out. I had to pull over. Children of God. I had to pull over. I had snot coming out my nose. It was every kind of demon was just, I just felt it was just leaving me. You know why? Because Jesus showed up. Jesus showed up. There's power in the name of Jesus. So, let's go. I'm going to move ahead a few months. On March 29th, my mama had died. She passed away. Well, let me backstep just a little bit. From January 17th of last year till January of this year, I have been delivered from everything. I no longer smoke. I do my best to control my tongue, but it's the hardest thing to control. I don't drink. I don't nothing. So I'm very appreciative to the Lord. I've seen His power work in my life. I've seen His greatness, His mercy, His kindness. God is a good God. So August 21st of last year on my daughter's birthday, we took my mother to church. And she was sitting there between me and my brother, and she wanted to give her life to Jesus. And they, were, they just happened that they were doing baptisms that day as well. So she did. She asked me and my brother. She only had, she's missing half a leg. But she asked me and my brother if we could help her get into the pool and stuff there at a James River North here in Springfield, Missouri to get baptized. And and we did. And we made that happen. Well, I guess all through January and February, my daddy had even made mention that mama would keep in a room. My mom was keeping him up at night in there reading her Bible. I got her Bible as well that was imprinted with her name on it. And she downloaded a, an app called uh, Uversion. Uvision, Uversion. I think it's Uversion. I've got the same app. I highly recommend this app. It's a Bible app. But she was a, the Bible app, the Bible I got her was the big giant letters. And she could see it even with her glasses. And she could read along with it. She really loved it. But. She'd given her life to Jesus, and, and when she died, I was really kind of confused because over the course of time, from January of 2004 till now, I've seen a lot of things. I seen the light one night, and the light was over here. You know, I was doing some stuff I shouldn't have been doing, but the light was real to me. I, I know that the light is real. And I also had a chance on another time, because I didn't heed God's warning when he showed me that the light was real. And I kept doing things I shouldn't have been doing. I dipped down into this other place one time. I call this that, that outer darkness, the total separate. Can set, put it up straight, Caleb. The camera's not straight. It's the total separation from God. I don't believe this is hell. I believe this is the outer darkness that Jesus talks about where there's going to be gnashing of teeth and whatnot. I've seen this place. This place is real. So, my mama was on Oxycontin at the time. They was prescribed by the doctor. But still, it put a doubt in my mind. My belief up to this point is repentance means repentance. Stop what you're doing and turn away from it. But So anyways, I was confused about where Mama was. Where was she? Was she in this outer darkness? Was she at the light? Because I know both of these places are real. But Jesus, being the good God that he is, and then he, he had done delivered me over the past year. So he's got me on a mission going somewhere. I don't know. I'm just following Jesus. Wherever Jesus is, that's where I want to be. He's got me on this mission. Um, he knew I was, I was shaking a little bit. And I was shaking. I mean, I really was. So he sent Mama back down. He let Mama come down. That's what I said. He let her come back down. I was laying in my bed, 5:30 in the morning. How are you gonna say, "Oh, well, you was having a dream, George"? I just hear me out. I was laying there, and it, I was sleeping. So at this point, I guess we could say it was a dream. But all of a sudden, the atmosphere just got really, really thick. It's just like real black and it's white pinpoints just everywhere. I couldn't see her, but she was there. It was Mom. And she told me this funny story. I woke myself up laughing. Laughing, 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 laughing. Okay? Uh, I looked over because I thought I woke my wife up. I didn't wake my wife up, so I, tur I turned my back, 
turned my head back over, you know, and I was going to lay back down. My wife was behind me, and I'm like, you know, I just big smile on my face. I'm like, oh, mama. As soon as I laid my head down and closed my eyes, I recognized and I realized she was still there. She was there. And uh, I, I couldn't see her still, but she was there. She says, oh, Georgie, she said this place is so beautiful. And then she said, mommy and daddy. And I didn't know what she meant by mommy and daddy, whether she'd seen my grandma and grandpa or she was going to meet grandma and grandpa. Or, I, I don't know, but I do know that she was there. Jesus accepted her into the kingdom of heaven. He didn't care about those oxycontin or nothing. So here's what I got from it is that Jesus searches your heart and your mind and your soul. Even though you're doing wrong, as long as you have the desire to do right and you want to live for Jesus and you love Jesus, He's going to forgive you and He's going to bring you into the kingdom. So, everything that it says in Romans about you know, sin controlling you and sin in your life, it's all true. Jesus has the power to forgive you. He knows your heart. So anyways, I was so grateful. Here's the point. Here's the point. I'll roll it all together. I was so grateful for what Jesus had done for me over the last year. And so grateful that not only did he let mommy in the kingdom, he let her come down here to tell me that she was in the kingdom. That I went on a 35-day fast prior to Pentecost. It was the 20th of the last month. 35 days. I ate or drank. I didn't drink no sodas. I drank nothing but water. I didn't eat anything until after 6 p.m. And then when I did, it was pasta, ramen noodles primarily. But I would go to like a, take the girls out for pasta or something because they wasn't on no fast. It was just me that was on a fast, the girls being my wife and my daughter. Uh, I did, limited, limited news, uh, media, anything that didn't have to do with Jesus, I didn't want nothing to do with it. So I got up here to Gary, Indiana, which is like the murder capital of the country. I don't know why I went there, but this is where Jesus sent me. He said, George, go up here. Didn't even know where I was going, but I went up here. There was a two days worth of repentance. Anyways, I expected Jesus to show up in my life. I mean, something big was about to go down, and I knew it. 35 days of fasting. Jesus done showed up, you know, January 04. He showed up January this year after I had received full deliverance. He gave it to me, you know. He showed me, Mama, Mama, you got my and said, Jesus is going to show up, large and in charge. He didn't show up. They said again, he didn't show up, but you know who did show up? Satan showed up. And I know this because he attacked me for like three days afterwards. I'm on my way back. He's like, George, it's okay. He says, your God didn't show up. Let's pull over that bar over there. Have yourself a drink, smoke a cigarette. It's okay. You know, things ain't what they, what they seem to be. But I resisted him because I know my God is real. I've met him. I've encountered him. I did resist him. I just kept resisting. But sooner or later, I get this word. This word is cross country. I don't know what cross country means. What, what is this supposed to mean, God? Cross country. But it's solid. I can't get rid of it. So over the next few days, I, I told my wife about it. And this one, my wife, she's like, well, George, I don't know what cross country means either. But you got a job and we have bills. So you do whatever you want. I love Jesus too, but you're going to you have to go to work. Baby. So anyways, I started building this cross. This is what I started building. And this is the way it's all gone down. So, just like in the book of Job, Satan is down here telling me that my God don't love me. My God ain't real. And, and this, that, and the other when God didn't show up on Pentecost like I had expected it. But Jesus and God, they sitting up there just like they was in the book of Job, watching Satan do his work down here. And they got glorified. Glorified. And I didn't respond to Satan's call. And the whole time I was at Pentecost, here's the deal. Here's the deal. The whole time I'm at Pentecost, what was I praying? I'm like, Jesus, use me, Father. You know, really. Use me. Why can't you use What's wrong with me? Here I am, Lord. This is what I was praying while I was down there at Pentecost. But you know what? The only thing I can say is be careful what you pray for. Because this is what he gave me. This is what he gave me. So now, I'm sitting in church last Sunday in the cross-country mission. Go up here, Dale. The cross-country mission. Here's the image he gave me. Here's the image he gave me. I'm sitting in church. The church of God, I attend. James River Assembly while I'm in Springfield, Missouri. 
and I attend a Church of God, which is a Pentecostal down there in uh, Bethalto, Illinois. Illinois. Uh, Illinois. So I'm sitting down there at, at the Church of God, so a cross-country nation. See that? That's the image he gave me while I was sitting in church. Cross-country. Right, so... You know, don't end it. You didn't stop it, did you? No, I did not. Okay, don't worry. Back up here on me. So the wording he gave me was cross country. And uh, anyways, they had the image of the cross country. And then it had over here. It was it, the way it was described was we used to be a Christian nation, and we moved off into secularism. Secular, secularism. Okay. Make sure that you can see me, Kayla, because you, you can. The candle all looks sideways and everything. Please, sweetheart, please. I'm only doing this one time. So then over here, it was paganism. So we went from Christian Christianity, secularism, and now we're moving back to pag paganism. So God says it's urgent. It's urgent, America. It's urgent, children of God, that this cross goes across this country. I told my daughter the other day, I says, I don't know why it's so urgent, but we don't know. You know maybe... Julie down the road just got beat up by her husband, you know, and he's two states away or whatever. God, God looks to the right and he sees eternity to come. He looks to the left and he sees eternity past. We don't understand him. We don't know. We just don't know. All we know is God is good. God is great. So today, today, children of God, I beg you, I implore you, please donate to this cause. Please donate to this cause. Donate to this cross. We're going to go around. You know, in Revelation 12 where it says, Satan was cast out. Can you see my face, Kayla? Yes, you can. When he says, yes, Satan is overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. I'm going to do my best to collect testimonies along the way and upload them to the YouTube page. I guess I'll start up Facebook even though I'm totally against any kind of social media. And I won't do it for nobody else. But I'll do it for Jesus. I, I believe this is important. I believe it's the. I believe it's why I was made. It's for this moment, right now, in this life, today. I believe God's sitting there. He looked to the right. He's like, ah, on this day, I need somebody carrying a big old monster, twelve foot by nine foot cross, down the road, because Julie's going to be running down the road, or oh man, something. So he he created me, and he dropped me down here to earth, put me in my mama's belly. I came out. There I am. So here I am today. Please, children of God, children of God that are lost and want to be saved, please donate. Please support this mission. On this, glory be to God. I thank you for your time watching. I thank you for your considerable donation. Peace be with you.